Well, good morning, everybody from Quartzsite, Arizona, on November 17th, 2024, at 5.35 a.m. Um, and it is currently 50, oh, 45 degrees, excuse me. And uh, we're looking for a high of 67 today and a low of 47. The temperatures are going to steadily go up into the low 70s this, um, this coming week. Um, somebody had asked me to do a little bit more on, say, the temperature on videos and, and such. So um, I usually say the temperature, but I don't do the forecast. People watching this wanting to come to Quartzsite want to know about conditions. Moderate, moderately windy. I mean, when a windy day so far since I've been here, just did three days, has been like a 14 mile an hour for 14, 15 miles an hour at the most for a couple of hours, but mostly it's been, it's been pleasant. One of the phenomenon that you find in quartzite in the winter in the desert is um, you can be sitting outside and you, you usually have a choice, sit in the shade or sit in the sun. <laughs> it's pretty funny because you sit in the sun and like, damn, you get hot really fast. And then you move your chair into the shade and you're like, where's my coat and hat? It's, it, it's, it's totally like that. Now, today, unfortunately, this is going to be unexpected. Something unexpected happened um, yesterday. And it's resulted in, I have a lot of comments. So one thing I need to do is um, not go off too much like I am right now or it's going to be you know, far too long a video. But check this out. Um, I had mentioned that usually I, you know, I get really happy, like when I'm in Pahrump, if I get 500 views on a video. And I had said a couple times, you know, when I go to Quartzsite, it's generally around 1,000, so it's double. So I was going to be pretty happy with that. And yesterday I released a video, um, my complete Quartzsite boondocking site where I just did a kind of detailed tour of the out, how I set up my camp on the outside. Well, as of right now, and that was four, <laughs> that was uh, just released yesterday. I have 7,500 views, <laughs> 7,500 views on it. Um, and uh, 29 comments. Um, there's, uh, the, just the comments video, and this is very unusually 278 views and 11 comments. Um, so a lot, you know, almost 40 comments, and that's a lot for me. So I'll try to get through them pretty fast. Today, right now, I'm releasing a, um, a pretty long quartzite video um, that I have no idea how this will do. Because it's so, it's long, so it, it may not... It's certainly not going to do 7,500 views. It's, it's over an hour. But what I did yesterday in this video was um, it starts with me getting my LTVA pass. Um, and I didn't bring the camera with me, but I brought the sound with me. And you can see me from the truck standing and talking to the, um, the BLM person there and doing the transaction to getting my sticker and answering the questions and providing information. And you can hear all the audio in that. And you can see real time how long it takes and what it's like. So that'll be maybe a relief to a lot of people. You know, how do I do this? Um, then I go to um, my mail service, but I also cover other mail services available in Quartzsite. And I actually stopped by one of them at least the outside of it. I go to one of the grocery stores, Coyote Fresh, and then um, I go to an RV supply place and kind of show you hardware store, supply place, k and on Main Street and kind of give you a tour through there. And also driving through town. And um, I do show driving from the um, La Posa South, the LTVA into town, but I, I don't do going back or it would have been a two hour video so anyway one hour 13 minutes so if you know don't feel bad if you you want to watch that scrub through fast forward through very you know various parts if you want or um you know just when you get tired stop watching it 
Don't get upset that the video is too long. It doesn't have to be long for you. You can stop anytime you want. Um, but I, I continue to do long videos because um, people seem to like them. So, all right. So let's get going um, on Montana Wife on Join Me, uh, the Quartzite First Day video. And that one was, um, what, which one was that? Hang on a second. Yeah, First Day is, well, that got 2,100. So double what I expected, 2,100. Um, and so she says, Montana wife says, good morning, Rob. Finished getting the husband off to work and was pleased to see you had a video already posted. Oh, and I, I was going to activate that long one. Did I activate it? Yes, it's ready to go. All right. Um, on uh, M. Campbell on elephants and bees, number day 250, positive news. Um, I love win-win solutions. Me too. Um, Ken Gray on Join Me, Quartzite First Day. Too bad he had to work yesterday, but at least he got to make a quick run to the store. Of course, if it were, were me, those steaks would be either in the truck bed or that cubby under the rig. Um, glad the pump worked for you. Yeah, I, I, I cleaned out the truck bed yesterday. I mean, cleaned it out. They're not in there. I, I opened all the containers inside um, the cubby under the rig. I don't know where the stakes went. The mystery will be solved when I stumble across them, though. Um, M. Campbell on uh, Quartzite First Day. And when I really need it, she's quoting me here. And when I really need it, I'll have no memory of doing what I just did. <laughs> that was a scene where... Um, I was unpacking something new, um, the water pump, and it had spare parts. So I put it in one of the tubs under underneath, and I was just kidding that um, I'm putting it here in case, you know, when I need it in the future. And when I, of course, when I need it, I'll have no memory of putting it there. I won't be able to find it, a.k.a. the stakes. Um, I, and M. Campbell said, I said, for years, somewhere safe has got to be really, really has got a, a lot of really, really good stuff stashed in it, but I have no idea where it is. At this point, I'm thinking it's an interdimensional portal that only works one way. I agree. There's The safe place has a ton of really cool stuff for me. I just can't find it again. Barb, who's camping with me here, you have the best gadgets. So glad you chose to camp with us. Let's see. David Smith on uh, Quartzite First Day. Enjoying your videos, hoping to head to Quartzite for the first time in January. Which way do you face your rig? Considering wind, solar, shade, etc. And I go, my door faces north. And he said, thanks. Um, Amy, uh, Amy Simplet, Simplet. Um, we're heading to Quartzite for the first time in a week. Your video is very helpful. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I, I should have explained why my door, um, points north. There's a good reason. Um, my door there and my refrigerator's there. They're on that side. And you, um, if you have a refrigerator that's non-residential, you, you got the propane combination. There is a vent, um, uh, that, on, on the side of your rig. And you don't want the sun to be beating on that. So um, also, uh, I want readily accessible shade on the front of my vehicle where I have my rug and chairs and everything. So if I face north, that's going to maximize the shade that I have. So it's going to protect my refrigerator and it's going to give me a nice place to sit. On the opposite side, on the south side, as the sun goes across, those are where my solar panels are. Now, wind, wind is very unpredictable. I, I have a wind break um, that you, if you saw my um, tour, of if you're one of the 7,000 viewers that saw that, you'll see a wind break. And even if I sit down, you know, sit down with the wind break, um, I can see that the, the wind direction completely changes from one moment to another. So there, I don't know about a ideal orientation for wind because it's just, 
if someone's going to tell me, well, the prevailing winds 82.6% of the time come from the southeast or something, somebody will be able to tell me that. But it hasn't been my personal experience that anyone has said to me, hey, this is the perfect sort of orientation for your rig for wind. Unless you get in a small group and you sort of box each other in so you have brakes on all sides, people do do that. And that, that works. That, that can work exceptionally well. Um, but being, I, I'm camped with other people, but I'm off sort of away from them. Um, you know, 150 feet or something. Um, Chip Miller says, uh, the LTVA offices, uh, have been closing at 12 noon, was told they were short on help. When I checked in a couple of weeks ago, I arrived late in the day and went first thing in the morning. He's right. Um, that's what I discovered. They, they operate from nine to noon and i believe they're closed wednesday and thursday but every other day it's nine to noon at least at Laposa south let's see um uh cheryl has told me that the kiosk in tyson wells is always Open regular hours. Don't know why they haven't had their flag out. I don't. I think she's mistaken about that, Judy, um, because I I went there um, the other day and uh, they were closed as well. Um, so it, during regular hours. So I I don't know about that. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, uh, blaze blazer. Blaze Rebel um, also said LTVA both in South is only up from 9 to 12 this year. They cut down on staff meeting. You can register at any of the La Posa booths. All true. All true. Um, Diana Pennington, do you have a link for the Ryobi pump? How, also, how do you hook up power to your macerator pump? Um, I gave her the link. And if, if the link doesn't work for you guys, just Ryobi um, pump typed into Amazon, you're going to find it. It's a little over a hundred dollars. And, uh, the, uh, macerator pump, I told her I have a power station in the storage bay above the, above the pump. Um, and then she asked, do you run the macerator pump off 12 volt? I said, yes. Um, Are you running it off your power station? Yes, I, I think I answered that before, so she probably already got that answer. We use an old wheelchair battery right now to power ours. Just wanted to see how you were doing yours. Always looking to improve, make things easier. We're planning on heading um, to Quartzsite in January. Yeah, I use my power station. And it also, so I have a power station that can, you know, be backup. It's only like a 100 amp hour battery. Um, and it's, it's getting to, you know, it was cutting edge technology when I got it. It's uh, it's an old power station now, um, and it's not a well known brand. It's the brand brand is called Energy I N G E R Y, <clears throat> and uh, it's been a workhorse. I, I've had to send it back to the factory once for a bad switch, um, and uh, I think I had to pay. I had to pay for the shipping. Um, so that was kind of a bummer, but otherwise it's been a workhorse that I've had for, I think four years. So I don't expect it to last all that much longer, but it, it's, it's made out of metal too. It's not plastic. It's made out of metal. It's, it's really solid. And it was shut, you know, the switch that failed was a cheap plastic switch. They spent all this money on this beautiful metal casing and they put in a cheap plastic switch and that's what failed. Um, okay, uh, uh, Leona Rosales, what is the temperature? If you think about it, could you drop us the temperature every once in a while? Just curious. So I said daily comment video, I announce the temperature, and I do. And now, but I'm going to listen to Leona and give a little bit more information on the, the comments video. As I said, gave the forecast, what, what the high is going to be, what the weather is going to be for the next few days. So I, I, I will do that.
That's, that's a good suggestion. Ken Gray said on the comments video, thanks for warning about distracted driving. I work for a major communication company. We used to get monthly updates of accidents and fatalities caused by that. That was, I was just saying, you know, um, Ken was talking to me about um, uh, on my trip where um, here where I was showing the drive and I was struggling with um, a setting on my rear view camera while I was driving and Ken very nicely said, Hey, you know, you can maybe do that stuff before you leave. Remember there's no rush and no hurry. And I, I'm getting to know Ken from his comments. And I, I suspect that he was thinking, boy, Rob, that's not a good idea for you to be fiddling with stuff while you're driving your, your truck and your home and your cat and your dog you know, 60 miles an hour down the highway. It's really dangerous, but he's too nice a guy to deliver that kind of, that kind of criticism. So I did it for him. You know, I, I kind of scolded myself and he would have been right if he said it. And that's, that's his comment. I knew that's what he was thinking. Smart guy. All right. Ken again has 11th grade economics. We did an experiments and found Oh, it's on the comment video, and I was saying, you know, I've always been kind of in favor of a national sales tax instead of income tax. And uh, so Ken Gray says, 11th grade, economic, 11th grade economics, we did an experiment, found that everyone had a, had a flat 14% income tax. You would need no other federal taxes, and the budget could be balanced in two years, probably nine or ten years now. So that's not a sales tax, but he's saying just a flat 14, you pay 14% of your income, no deductions, no, you know, you don't file taxes. It's just for every dollar that you make that gets, obviously that gets reported, um, you, you, you get 14, you, they withhold and give 14 cents to the government and that's it. Um, Let's see, Ken on comments, I had to come back to say nothing about elephants or be today, I may want to republish. I'm not sure, he, he does have a um, eclectic sense of humor. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but now that I'll say it in a comment today, he'll explain it. M. Campbell, um, I'd be in favor of a national sales tax if basic food staples were exempt. However, it could get onerous when you start talking about states that get their income from sales taxes rather than state income taxes. Where I live, that will work out to a total sales tax of 18.25. Now, that's a good point, but also in your explanation is the counterpoint. It's 18.25, but you don't pay any income tax. So you would... in. Um, uh, other states would either have to go to the sales tax model like your state or you would still, you know, have to be filing a, a state income tax form. So interesting, though. Interesting idea. Um, Cushman, clean your solar panels. <laughs> no, I'm not going to clean my solar panels. Um you know, after a big windstorm where it really gets thickly caked on, I'll probably clean it. I'll probably clean my solar panels maybe once a month. It, 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 that's the most frequent. And I stand by that it makes almost no difference in energy production. It's counterintuitive. I get it. But Tim and I did a uh, very deliberate, both of us did separate and very deliberate experiments last year when our both our panels were fairly dirty. We did it at different times. And I get it. It's hard to test because you can't um, exactly replicate the conditions because the sun's always moving, right? But it was so close that we concluded it absolutely doesn't make much difference. And if you look, at, I look at my solar panels now, and I've only been here a couple of days. They're, <clears throat> this is the desert with dust and dirt blowing everywhere every day. They weren't very dirty at all. Uh, so um, it does, it really makes no difference. Um, uh, trust me, it doesn't. Um, and if it did, I'd be cleaning them every day if it made a significant difference. Um, I almost went on a tangent, but I'm not going to because I have so many comments today. 
The wind is whipping. Is it like that all season? And I say very often, you know, the wind that you saw whipping around, that's pretty typical. It's windy here. Um, uh, Quartzite first day, maybe the new Secretary of Interior, Doug Burgum of North Dakota, will leave the LTVA prices as is. I'm going to doubt that the new Secretary of the Interior is going to have any visibility to the little tiny LTVA. It's the only LTVA in the country in the BLM. It's very tiny. I would be shocked if the Secretary, a cabinet level person, weighed into that decision. But you never know. I've been wrong before. Bill Wright on Quartzite First Day. Rob, my wife sometimes watches your videos with me, but not every one that I do. We just watched this video and she commented on how she could tell by the inflection of your voice that you are so happy to be in Quartzite. She, we, really enjoyed this video and are happy for you. Looking forward to the next. Well, Bill, I hope you saw the, the next one. Um... The next one was the the pig one. <laughs> I still can't believe that. I'm looking at it on on the phone here, and it continues even at this early hour. It continues to go up. It's almost eight thousand views right now. Um, Debbie says, "I love watching you in the video, trying to see how or if I can live in my car there. I need to have a cheap location for me and my doggy. Thanks for sharing. You're, you're a good man. Um, people live in their cars, live in very call it cars. And you know what I saw yesterday? I saw a guy that had a teeny tiny trailer that he towed with his motorcycle. And he lives in that all season here. Now, you want to live in your car. If you're going to be in the LTVA, and rather you're going to buy a season pass, versus the 14 day free areas. If you're in the LTVA, you must park your car and camp within 500 feet of a vault toilet. If you're gonna be down here where I am, I believe there are 10 of them, so you have lots of choices. But there are many people here that car camp. You will not be alone. Um, Cushman, pin your location on a nav map to find the way back to camp, where I said, you know, at night, um, you, you can get lost trying to find your camp. And um, I said, NAV programs do not work as well as there are no roads and lots of hazards. Um, so that's, um, Christian, I appreciate you um, putting that out there, but it, it just doesn't really work. And let me explain why. One, there are no roads. The roads that are visible out here aren't official roads. Garmin doesn't know anything about them. Um, or Google or whatever. Um, I, you know, when I've gotten lost, I have a GPS pin where I can see on Google Maps where I am and where it is. But getting there in the desert here can be very difficult to do because there are obstacles. There are things called washes, like they're gullies, that um, if you run into one, you can't get, you might not be able to get your vehicle through it. Um, so it, it's, it's not as you're not going to put your location in a nav program and it's going to give you turn by turn instructions. It just, it, it won't work. Um, ask me how I know I've tried multiple times. Uh, Danny Nomad on the comments, but if you don't need in motion data, you don't need Starlink's roam plan. Um, I'm on a residential and just switch my home address when I move. It's up to you if it's worth the extra steps to save 45 bucks a month. You know what? He's right. He's right. I was bragging that I have residential with with portability turned on and I pay 145. Danny rightly says, hey, I only pay 120. I have residential and you can go into the app and every time you move, you can put in the address where you are. Um, and that that legit. Why don't I do that? Um, not a great reason, but here's the reason. Back in the beginning, before there was any Roman at all, that's what you had to do. Um, there was only residential, and as I moved, I'd have to put in a different address. Um, but there had to be availability at that address to change it. Um, so it sometimes was difficult. You'd move someplace and it wouldn't let you change the address. And I think things have changed. I'm guessing, Danny, you can t tell me 
and I'm sure you will say, you don't have to come on here and say it. I'm based on what he's saying. Danny Nomad travels a lot, and I don't think he's had a trouble changing the address. So that's changed. So that's a really, really good piece of advice, probably. So it's $120 instead of, well, especially if you are going into this new, you would pay $165 versus $120 for residential. And you can always change the plan. So it's probably a good, the equipment's exactly the same. So I would, if I had, if I were doing it new, I'd order the residential just like Danny for 120 a month. And then as I moved, I would put in the address. If that stopped working or was, there was any problem with doing that, I would um, pay the extra dollars per month, which is a lot of money, by the way, as he pointed out, uh, $45. Um, I would, um, you can always change your plan. And the uh, the other thing on, the, uh, if you're on the Rome plan, which I can't do it because I'm grandfathered into residential, um, if you don't travel year round, you can turn it off and not get billed anything when you're at home using your home internet. So anyway, um, I'm not doing well getting off in a ta tangent, am I? Benita Dominguez, um, first day quartzite video. Good day. Thanks for the look around quartzite. Uh oh. As for the Yuma, California LTVA's upcoming changes, I'm all ears. Hope it's not as bad for the 2025 stay rate change that bite. Well, that's all just about going from $180 to $600 for, um, um, for a ticket for the season. Um, yeah. We'll see. It's proposed. We'll see what happens. We, I, I don't think we'll find out until, you know, the um, after the first of the year. Um, Slippery Chicken. Duke and I are excited. You're in Quartzsite, living through you and Dottie. How is the dog park? Um, and I'm going to guess Duke's a dog. Or maybe, maybe Duke is her husband. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but she is asking the dog park. The dog park in Q is great. They, they have three big it's all grass even though you know it's a desert town it's all grass perfectly great maintained in three sections for small medium and large dogs so you don't have to put your little dog like little dotty there in with you know giant german shepherds so it's separated and it's really nice um let's see and free of course Tim Harris says, welcome, neighbor. Look forward to meeting you. That'd be great, Tim. Um, uh, Benita Dominguez again. Hola, again, question. to avoid, How to avoid tire rot? When is the best time to cover the tires? I said, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not a, um, it's, I'm not a good source to answer this very good question. I know people ask me about RV stuff and a lot. And, and when I know, I answer. When I don't know, I just say, I, I don't know. They're better sources. I've never covered my tires, um, and I haven't had a problem. Like the tires on uh, the rig I have now, they have plenty of tread on them. They look good, but they're going to tick um, in the fall of next year, five years. So I'm replacing them. I don't care what they look like, uh, how good I think they are, five years, I'm replacing them. I do know that, that that is pretty universally held with people that know what they're talking about is from the date of manufacture, replace your tires. Five years. Um, your outdoor says on the quartzite video, wow, nice setup, been camping for over 25 years and hope to hit the road full time next summer. Have done a bit of boondocking to nowhere near, nowhere as set up as you, as you. One thing I do is fill up 10 one-gallon jugs and keep them in the cupboard behind toilet. So I need them. They're ready to go. Um, you know, I, I don't do anything like that because, I, of course, I have a water tank. It's 32 gallons, and I keep it filled. And um, so water is readily available. Boondocking here like this in Quartzsite. Uh, Judy says... Um, uh, this is on um, my boondocking campsite video that has now like, okay, let's refresh that. See if it, 
70, it's another hundred. It's a 7,800. It's going to be, it's going to be 8,000 probably by the time I'm done with this video. Um, and in it, an ambulance went by and I'm like, whoa, what's that? Is that a, is that a real, you know, so out here, have you seen an ambulance? It's one of two things. It's an ambulance looking to find somebody to take him to the hospital, or it's a dude that bought a used ambulance <laughs> and is camping at it. And it's more likely the latter, that it's some dude camping in an ambulance. Um, they don't always get rid of all the, the signage on the top and stuff. Um, but Judy says, Judy was out there and saw it too. And she's saying the ambulance was trying to find its way out. It gave them directions to get back to the dump area since they wanted the least bumpy way out. They said they had no trouble coming in, but couldn't find the way out. So I wonder if they had a patient in there and they were trying to get out to the hospital and couldn't do it. You see, it's so easy to get disoriented out here and not be able to get out because of the, those washes and gullies. Um, you know, he was running up against those and couldn't get through them in the ambulance. It's no joke. And, uh, uh Judy also says a minute later, I was going to go sit with you and out with you and Cheryl, but as I was putting my stuff in the rig, y'all went inside. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. I said, it was cold. It got cold. I was sitting outside with Cheryl and, uh, it was it was too, you know, too uncomfortable in the sun and I'm sitting in the shade by her rig talking to her and I'd like had a, uh, my hoodie on and it was, it was getting cold and it was only, it was three in the afternoon. Um, your comments, uh, Ray Taylor says, interesting series, new subscriber. Well, thank you, Ray. Uh, Blaze Rebel, um, Rob, I don't know if anyone told you, but there's a new Dollar General market. It's across from Family Dollar, a little further east. It's huge and well-stocked. I think it's giving Roadrunner and Coyote a run for the money. I'm going to check it out for sure. I'll do a video soon. Soon, soon, soon. Probably this. I would say chances of me doing the uh, Dollar General market, the new one, this week are 100%. Um. Q881, congratulations on getting back to Quartzsite, Rob. It seemed like just yesterday you packed up and left. And this is um, uh, Perump Cheryl, who is going to come down with me. But she bought a bicycle rack, and it was delayed in shipping. So she's got to wait for it. Like you said, eight months went, um, went by really fast. Hopefully, I'm going to get out there this January. Um Okay, um, it's it's not the person I thought. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, uh, hopefully, I'm going to get out there this January. I've been planning for a few years. Glad to see her reason near you. That'll make it easier on me when I finally get out here. I thought this was Perump Cheryl. It's not. She's got a similar screen name, though, and I think she has a comment here somewhere. Uh, Stuart Stewart, 866. I'm curious if your e-bike is able to tow your wastewater tow to the dump station. I said, no. 36 gallons times 8 pounds equals 288 pounds. My little bike, not towing anything anywhere near that. <clears throat> not even close. I've seen people tow totes, and they're the little tiny totes, like maybe 10 gallons. Um, and even 10 gallons is 80 pounds. You'd, my e-bike, the light version, probably wouldn't even tow that. Um, let's see. Beat Farmer. I left a, um, a bike unlocked for four months in front of my rig. Would someone take it? What's the crime situation out there? And I said, crime isn't rampant, but I would never leave my bike or generator unlocked. I mean, just because there's not a big crime problem out here doesn't mean there's no crime out here. And the little crime that there is, if they're stealing stuff, they're going to look for stuff that isn't locked. I guarantee that. Um, and Phillips uh, Williams kind of jumps on this thread and says, yeah, I don't think I'd tempt fate. I used to live out in the boonies in Washington State on Whidbey Island. I figured, hey, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'll leave my car unlocked. But one day someone went rifling through my car. So I never trust anything in public. 
Um, Joseph says on the quartzite boondocking um, camp looks great. Slippery Chicken says, I'm trying to imagine Duke riding in that cart all 140 pounds of him. Um, so that solves the mystery. Duke is the dog, not the husband. <laughs> Unless her husband weighs 145, 140 pounds and she's imagining her husband um, riding in, in my, my dog trailer, which I sincerely doubt. That's kind of funny, huh? Um, Nancy Lowe, uh, you can burn dead debris from the desert, but nothing from LTVA line. Yeah, I was saying how you can't burn stuff in the desert, but she's right that it's LTVA, regular BLM, BLM land, you can burn the dead stuff. So I was wrong. But, but this is why I love my, my, my viewers in the comments. They get out here and if I unintentionally give bad information, they, they straighten it out. And, and so often, very kindly like this. Um, I checked, uh, she says I checked with BLM office, credibility, right? Um, oh no, I ate it. She said, let me just do the whole thing again. You can burn dead debris from the desert, but nothing from LTVA land. I checked with BLM office. So fact with credibility attached. Oh no, I ate at Burger King all the time on broke days. Yes, McDonald's without the app is high. Dollar General Mart is new. Quartzite. Yeah, lots of, you know, information in there that you may not get if you're not familiar. Um, Burger King closed. Um, here in Quartzite, and it was an inexpensive thing. The McDonald's has notoriously high prices here in Quartzite, and people just go crazy complaining about it. But if you use the McDonald's app, you can cut those prices practically in half. Um, and uh, Dollar General Mart, a, a, it's called the DG Market. It's a Dollar General with like produce and meats. Um, it's brand new this year in Quartzite, and I'm going to do, I'll, I'll, I'll do a tour of it this week. Um, let's see, 2003 DDJ. Ah, oh, this one. Have you thought about just leaving the water tank in the back of your pickup? When it's full, just back up to your camper, do the water transfer with the new pump. So there's a lot of back and forth, and I'm not going to read all these comments. Here's the thing. Um... I don't use it. I could use a big bladder where I'd fill 30 gallons up at a time. And then I don't want to do that. It's a pain in the neck. All I want to do is take my six gallon jug and fill it when I'm in town with pure water. Um, it costs a dollar to do that. And I want to take that jug. And what I do every year is I'd pick, I'd take the jug out of the truck and, um, put the nozzle in the side of the, the, um, the trailer and dump the water in. Easy peasy. Well, as I'm getting older, it's like 50 pounds and holding 50 pounds up for the, like a full, for, you know, a minute or even the 30 seconds where it's still heavy holding it up is hard for me. And it's awkward. Taking it by the handle out of the truck and walking to where it needs to go is no problem at all. No strain, no risk to my back or anything. So the solution was I'll buy a pump and just put it on the ground and pump it in instead of, you know, holding the thing up awkwardly. And I'm really happy with this pump. It sucks that thing dry in like a minute. It's perfect. It's made by Ryobi. But many people not just this person, but many people got really um, obsessed with the idea of me leaving the jug in the bed of my pickup truck instead of carrying it and backing the truck up and pumping it out of the back of the truck. Um, it just, it, I appreciate the concern for my back. But it, it just, that's not a practical thing. One thing is where, where the intake is, there's my rug and my chairs and tables and all kinds of things. I'd have to move everything out of the way, back the truck probably over the rug, um, and it, it's just not worth it. It, it. And what? And I don't even put the jug in the bed. <laughs> 
I put it in the back seat. Um, so it, it just, um, so I, I said, I tried to kill it by saying, no, the pickup bed is lower than the intake physics to prevent that. Sadly, only because I thought, um, he meant instead of using a pump, um, let gravity feed, um, like I used to have a bladder that I would put in the back of the truck, but, um, um, I still needed a pump because incredibly it turns out the, the level of the pickup bed when I pulled up to the trailer was lower than the intake. So I couldn't gravity feed. Um, so, um, that's what I thought he meant. And then um, I gave that answer and someone was kind of upset with that answer. Um, so I had to clarify and say, there's no problem carrying the jug. I just don't want to have to hold it up to empty it. That That's the risk to my back is that strain. You know, it, if you hold like the remote up out like this, it feels like nothing. But hold it out long enough, it'll start getting painful. So... Trust me. Um, and I said, I'm happy with my current water solution. And this is for everybody that's concerned about that. Thanks for thinking about my safety. But I'm totally good with what I'm doing. But I, I appreciate people worrying about my back. Um, I think I saw a kitty peeking out the screen door in the video. That was uh, Montana wife. And I said... Obviously, a lawless intruder. And of course, I'm joking. It was George. And boy, you got to be quick and alert to see that little... And the, the screen door was closed. So she saw George's little face through the screen door in sort of a flash in the video. Pretty pretty good there, Montana wife. Uh, Randy. Hey, Randy. I'm so happy for you, Dottie and George, settling into your winter home. Great first quartzite video and that's on the first day video um spiker says your windscreen is interesting like the scenery can um can some wind go through it i hear wind can be very strong at time there does it stay up good questions so my friend jim um and daryl for my birthday last year gave me this windscreen they were selling them at the big tent event and um yes uh the wind goes through that screen but there's a like a solid backing you can put up there as well that blocks all the wind and it comes with these um like uh vinyl bags that are designed to put sand or rocks in and you put those weighted things over the legs so it doesn't blow over but it still blows over if it's strong enough. It blows over all the time. In fact, there's some damage on it from um, uh, from last year. There's one of the things is is bent, sadly, but it still works. And um, you know, I leave it out there, but you can lower it so you half the surface area so it, it doesn't blow over. But if it's a really windy day, you got you got to take that you got to take it down completely. You got to take the fabric off, or I don't care how many rocks you put in those things, it's gonna blow away. And if you weight it down too much, it's gonna start bending the metal. The metal's not that strong. So um, good questions. But when it works, it's really nice. It's really nice. Um, uh, Nancy says. Um, uh, Nancy Lowe says on the LTVA, aren't they only open Monday, Wednesday, um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? And I answered closed Wednesday and Thursday and open 9 to 12 every other day. I actually took a picture of the, that's La Posa South. I took a picture of the, uh, the sign yesterday. Um, Beth Dixon says you're clearly, or you're certainly prepared for all creature comforts in the desert. Happy holidays to you and Princess Dottie. Uh, take off, take often. Cool setup. I could see an ambulance causing some concern, at least for a moment down there. I'm only 53, but can feel the oncoming tide. Well, if you think the oncoming tide of health issues and aches and pains, 
Um, yeah, it's coming, buddy, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I wouldn't trade for anything. Um, Robert Shinizzi. Um, you got a nice setup, but I always bring my metal detector. Last time I found a gold ring less than an inch underground. Enjoy. Maybe I'll find gold this year. Robert Ballard says, wow, what a great effective campsite. We can see and understand the attraction to spectacular sunrises and sunsets. A slice of heaven on earth. We see it didn't take long for Dottie to get used to the setup and be comfortable with the view. Um, Dottie loves quartzite. She will sit in her little bed out there in front of the trailer all day long in the sun if I let her. I don't let her, but she would. Um, I had an idea about your water transfer routine. Maybe use the back of the pickup. I'm not going to read the rest of it. You're getting the idea here. Um, a lot of people want me to use the back of the pickup. Um, and uh, I never thought when I talked, I never thought I would raise all this controversy about the water. But I did. You never can tell. Um, but it's just people being concerned about me. I get that. Um Terry says, hi, Rob. How exciting to be back in Quartzite. Seems like you just left, but time flies. I really like these Quartzite videos. Looking forward to all the excitement as it rolls out. Thanks for sharing. Randy, beautiful. That's the Quartzite sunset. Just a short I did. And it wasn't one of the more spectacular sunsets, but I just did it because I felt like it. And Quartzite boondocking camp. Ken Gray says, very nice setup. Philip Williams, I have a question. I know snakes kind of hide out during winter but the scorpions still come out. Is this correct? Is there a way to make a perimeter around camp to discourage them from coming in? And also do scorpions tend to get inside vehicles, like on the seats, floor, or whatever? Don't hear much about them. There's a reason you don't hear much, because four years, I've never seen a scorpion or a snake, um, ever. And I haven't been camping with people that say, oh my God, I saw a scorpion yesterday. Um, I've been around people when it gets warm, like the next camp over called um, over this way um, that have a lot of people there in March, they had a rattlesnake and it was getting warm. It was like in the high eighties. So, but during the winter, the real winter here, never heard of a, a, a snake or a scorpion. It's not something that I spent any time worrying about. Um, now, scorpions, they exist out here for sure. So one thing that I wouldn't do is, you know, leave my shoes outside and then put on my shoes without turning them upside down. That's sort of a basic scorpion thing. But I just eliminate that. But I don't leave my shoes outside. Um, uh, Jay Jansen, organized and functional. How do you keep the windbreak from going airborne? Comes with bags you fill with rocks or sand. Uh, Chuck DeBoy, this is a great setup. I, I'll be out the court site in about a week or two. Hopefully you'll be able to give me some tips. Absolutely. Boot76. Okay, friend, you got me when you displayed that water pump. Never would have thought of its existence until now. I'm about to go back on the road full time and I see this is a great tool. You know, there, there are lots of pumps that you can buy that are 12 volt. Um, and I, I've had more than one. But this one with the Ryobi um, battery um, and the fact that you can plug it in, and I plug it in here because I have an outlet right out there, is so much more powerful than the other ones and it moves water a lot faster. Um, we used it with Cheryl the other day to empty her, like I think it's a 32 gallon um, bladder. It's the bladder I used to own and I gave it to her and it, it emptied that in, what is it Cheryl, maybe 10 minutes I think. 10 minutes and it, it, it drained that. Um, Naj says, beautiful views. Yeah, isn't it? Um, Mario says, great video. May Lord Jesus Christ keep you safe. Well, that's sweet of you to say. Travel, uh, small, live big, great setup. Uh, young Kim, I hope you're healthy while sympathizing with Bill Wright 821 and looking forward to the next time. I know Bill Wright's a subscriber or a, uh, a, at least a watcher and a commenter. I don't I'm not sure what he said that you're sympathizing with, but great. Um, I in Nancy on the courtside sunset, I can hear your footsteps. I hope you made a little campfire to enjoy the sunset. You know what? Um, I, I I I do have a propane fire pit. It's still in the back of my truck. 
I need to I need to set it up. I'll probably do that today. Brianna Applegate, nice campsite. Um, beautiful watch, doggy. <laughs> uh, Nancy Menderos looks really comfortable the way you have it set up. And that was 32 minutes ago, so we'll refresh that. And I bet there's more out there because of all these. No, there isn't anything else out there. So I'll give you, just out of curiosity, if you're curious, I'll give you a final count on the, that video. Yeah, well, I've hit 8,000. It's 8,026 views so far. And it's like, you know, um, it's 625 in the morning and there's been 523 views in the last hour. It's five in the morning. I mean, granted, it's, um, it's not five. No, it's six. It's 630 now, not 530. I've started at 530. So it's six. So it's 630 AM. Granted on the East coast, it's 830 in central at 7:30 and but on the west coast it's 5:30 and it's still 500 views. I'm just amazed by that. So anyway, um we went 50 minutes. Sorry about that. But if you made it to the end of this, you're my hero. You're a rock star. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um I will see you tomorrow.